a lot of people are drinking coffee. You mentioned healthy coffee. I think that's a really important caveat to this, organic mm -hmm. and, and pesticide free. But let's take it even further and talk about other beverages or maybe even foods, things that we can have during the fasted state that technically don't break the fast. Mm. Yeah. So this is a great conversation. So the, believe it or not, I, have you ever heard of the term fasted snack? There's actually such a thing. In your book, yes. Yeah. So I found this in the research that I've done um, on fasting. I found this study that showed when people had a fasted snack, it allowed them to fast a little bit longer. So let's say they were going to go 13 hours. They have a fasted snack. Now they can go 15 hours and they're getting the same metabolic benefit as if they never had that fasted snack. And the, the requirements of the fasted snack are a pure fat bomb. Like it's, it's all fat. So finding a pure fat bomb can be difficult. So, you know, you, we tell people to lean into something like a little bit of an avocado and uh, you can do a little bit of nut butter. You could do a scoop of nut butter. Some people do a little bit of bone broth. Some people do, you know, a little bit of MCT oil on a spoon and just drink it. So there are fasted snacks like that. But what most people do is their coffee. And I think this is a really good tool. Dave Asprey and I have had numerous conversations about this. Um, he's a believer of like adding probiotics into that and prebiotic fibers to feed your microbes, putting a lot of butter and MCT oil in clean coffee. He strongly feels will help you elongate that fasting window. And I would say there's some truth to that. Um, you definitely want to get out of this idea that there's an absolute for any, everybody, because what we've seen with coffee is that coffee may really help one person elongate their fast and it may actually break the fast for another person. So you, how all of what, how that is determined is really by your microbiome. Your microbiome is going to, those bacteria in your gut are going to be the regulators of blood sugar when that coffee hits it. And we all have unique microbiomes. So um, we really want to make sure that we test our own blood sugar. And I, I, you, you, do you know that test? What test are you talking about? A CGM or? No, uh, checking your own blood sugar pre and post um, uh, coffee to see if coffee works for you. I, don't, I didn't want to repeat it if. Uh, no, if I, it's not something I've done before. I've worn a CGM and. and watch my blood glucose over a period of time. But are you talking about like a classic finger prick? Yeah. So you can do a CGM, you can do a finger prick, but this is the blood, this is the test to see if coffee works for you is that you, yeah, you, it, it, it take, you take a blood sugar reading and then you drink your cup of coffee. Half hour later, take another bl blood sugar reading. You can do it on a pin prick. You can do it on a CGM, totally up to you. And what you're looking for is those two numbers to be almost exactly the same. The second number should be very similar to that first number. If for some reason the second number after the cup of coffee, it drops, the blood sugar drops, um, that's okay because that might have moved you more into the fasted state. It's if it, if it elevates. And then the question becomes, well, how much elevation takes you out of a fasted state? And I say anything over a five-point difference of blood sugar elevation um, has now taken you out of the fasted state. So for example, if your blood sugar is 100 before the cup of coffee, and then a half an hour later, it's 110 after the cup of coffee, it's pulled you out of a fasted state. That's so interesting. And from your estimation and working with people, how many people would this affect? It, you know, I wish we had numbers on that, but I would say it's more than you would think. And I, and I can only say based off of myself, because your microbes are always changing. Your, your microbiome is always adapting to your environment. So one of the things that I've noticed is sometimes coffee doesn't pull me out of a fasted state and sometimes it does. And it's all based off of those little, those little super microbes in your, our gut. They're determining it. So I would say it's more common than you would think. Um, and you know, it really goes to what are you trying to do with your fast? You know, some people are purists and they're like, okay, I'm not going to do coffee. And other people are like, I want to make this a lifestyle. It's super helpful. So I've got to find a rhythm with it. That's going to work for me so that I can fast a little longer. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. So if you want to lose weight, 
I, I really feel like the first thing we've got to look at is when you eat, not what you eat. Coffee may really help one person elongate their fast and it may actually break the fast.